opening hymn is O Come All Ye Faithful, hymn 102. O come all ye faithful, triumphantly sing. Come see in the manger our Savior and King. To Bethlehem hasten with joyful accord. O come let us adore him. O come let us adore him. O come let us adore him, Christ the Lord. True Son of the Father, he comes from the skies. To be born of a virgin he doth not despise. To Bethlehem hasten with joyful accord. O come, let us adore him. O come, let us adore him. O come, let us adore him, Christ the Lord. To thee then, O Jesus, this day of thy birth, be glory and honor through heaven and earth. True Godhead incarnate, omnipotent word. O come, let us adore him. O come, let us adore him. O come, let us adore him, Christ the Lord. Amen. O Lord, open thou my lips, and my mouth shall so forth thy praise. Make haste, O God, to deliver me. Make haste to help me, O Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Alleluia. Our psalm for today is Psalm 2. Why do the nations rage? Why do the peoples grumble in vain? The kings of the earth take a stand and the rulers join together against the Lord and against his anointed one. Let us tear off their chains and throw off their ropes from us. The one who is seated in heaven laughs. The Lord scoffs at them. Then he speaks to them in his anger and in his wrath he terrifies them. I have installed my king on Zion, my holy mountain. I will proclaim the decree of the Lord. He said to me, You are my son, today I have begotten you. Ask me, and I will give you the nations as your inheritance, and the ends of the earth as your possession. You will smash them with an iron rod, you will break them to pieces like pottery. So now, you kings, do what is wise. Accept discipline, you judges of the earth. Serve the Lord with fear and rejoice with trembling. Kiss the son, or he will be angry, and you will be destroyed in your way, for his wrath can flare up in a moment. How blessed are all who take refuge in him. Here ends the psalm. We pray, Almighty and everlasting God, enlighten our hearts that we may find joy and comfort in the heart in the birth of your dear son. Make known everywhere your loving kindness give you praise and glory, and with peace abiding in our hearts, may patiently endure and overcome all adversity. Through the same, your dear Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Ghost, one true God, now and forever. Amen. Rejoice, rejoice this happy morn. A Savior unto us is born, the Christ, the Lord of glory. His lowly birth in Bethlehem, the angels from on high proclaim and sing redemption's story. My soul, extol God's great favor. Bless him ever for salvation. Give him praise and adoration. Amen. Today we are celebrating the birth of our Savior that was promised long ago and today we celebrate the fulfillment of that promise. One of those promises was recorded in the book of Micah, the fifth chapter, verses two through four. But you, Bethlehem Ephratah, though you are small among the clans of Judah, from you will go out the one who will be the ruler for me in Israel. His goings forth are from the beginning, from the days of eternity. Therefore the Lord will give them up until the time when the woman who is in labor bears a child. Then the remaining survivors from his brothers will return to the people of Israel. He will stand and shepherd with the strength of the Lord and the majesty of the name of the Lord his God. 
They will dwell securely, for at that time he will be great to the ends of the earth. The prophet Isaiah also talked about the coming Savior. In Isaiah chapter 9, beginning with the second verse, is a familiar prophecy concerning the Savior. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. For those living in the land of the shadow of death, the light has dawned. You have multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you like the joy at harvest time, like the celebration when people divide the plunder. For you have shattered the yoke that burdened them. You have broken the bar on their shoulders and the rod of their oppressor, as you did in the day of Midian. Every boot that marched in battle and the garments rolled in blood will be burned. They will be fuel for the fire, for to us a child is born, to us a son is given. The authority to rule will rest on his shoulders. He will be named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. There will be no limit to his authority and no end to the peace he brings. He will rule on David's throne and over his kingdom to establish it and to uphold it with justice and righteousness from now on into eternity, the zeal of the Lord of armies will accomplish this. So far, the reading. The historic epistle lesson for this day is found in the book of Titus, the second chapter, beginning with the 11th verse. For the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation to all people. It trains us to reject ungodliness and worldly lusts and to live self-controlled, upright, and godly lives in this present age. While we wait for the blessed hope that is the glorious appearance of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. He gave himself for us to redeem us from all lawlessness and to purify for himself a people who are his own chosen people eager to do good works. So far in the epistle lesson. The gospel lesson for today is the familiar Christmas account written by Luke recorded in chapter 2. In those days a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first census taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. And everyone went to register, each to his own town. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, out of the town of Nazareth, into Judea, to the town of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, his wife, who was pledged to him in marriage, and was expecting a child. And so it was that while they were there, the time came for her to give birth. And she gave birth to her firstborn son, wrapped him in swaddling clothes, and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. There were in the same country shepherds staying out in the fields, keeping watch over their flock at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were terrified. But the angel said unto them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy which shall be for all people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born for you. He is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. Suddenly, there was with the angel a multitude from the heavenly army, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and in earth peace, goodwill toward mankind. When the shepherds went away from them into heaven, I'm sorry, when the angels went away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Now let us go to Bethlehem and see this thing which has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they told others the message they had been told about this child. And all who heard it were amazed by what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things, pondering them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard 
and seen, which were just as they had been told. So far, Luke's Christmas story. And our final reading is from John chapter 1. This is also a look at Christmas. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. It was with God in the beginning. Through him everything was made, and without him not one thing was made that has been made. In him was life, and the life was the light of mankind. The light was shining in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as an eyewitness to testify about the light so that everyone would believe through him. He was not the light, but he came to testify about the light. The real light that shines in everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made through him, yet the world did not recognize him. He came to what was his own, yet his own people did not accept him. But to all who did receive him, to those who believe in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. They were born, not of blood, or of the desire of the flesh, or of a husband's will, but born of God. The word became flesh and dwelled among us. We have seen his glory, the glory as the only begotten from the Father, full of grace and truth. So far, our reading. Our next hymn is hymn 76, a great and mighty wonder, a full and holy cure. The virgin bears the infant with virgin honor pure. Repeat the hymn again, to God on high be glory and peace on earth to men. The word becomes incarnate and yet remains on high, and cherubim sing anthems to shepherds from the sky. Repeat the hymn again. To God on high be glory and peace on earth to men. Since all he comes to ransom, by all be he adored. The infant born in Bethlehem, the Savior and the Lord. Repeat the hymn again. To God on high be glory and peace on earth to men. An idle form shall perish, an error shall decay, and Christ shall wield his scepter, our Lord and God, for a. Repeat the hymn again. To God on high be glory and peace on earth to men. Amen. Grace be to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Our text is found in Paul's letter to the Colossians, the first chapter, beginning with the 15th verse. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. For in him all things were created in heaven and on earth things seen and unseen, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities, all things have been created through him and for him. He is before all things, and all things hold together in him. This is our text. Dear fellow redeemed, today is Christmas. We are celebrating a birth. This Birth is a very human event, and it assures us that Jesus is true man, our brother. For our Advent pulpit exchange with Zion Monroe this year, our theme asked the question, what is Christmas? Recently on the radio I heard, Christmas is all about children. We have snow on the ground, and winter at this time of the year, and some people think songs about those things are what Christmas season is about. I remember my mother baking cookies this time of the year. But none of these things have to do with the birth of Jesus. Our Advent series looked at Jesus and answered the question, what is Christmas, by saying Christmas is the incarnation, Christmas is the virgin birth, Christmas is Emmanuel. Incarnation simply says that the Son of God took on human flesh and became the Son of Man, became our brother. And all this was accomplished when he was born of the Virgin Mary. Jesus did not have a human father. He was given the name Emmanuel, 
And that name simply means God with us. And God is with us in the person of Jesus. Who Jesus is and what his work accomplished, his work of redemption, is beyond the ability of human reason to fully grasp. And quite often there are people who, who use their human reason and do not accept the fact that Jesus is God. Many of the Jews, when Jesus walked on this earth, saw only Joseph the carpenter's son. And when Jesus was standing before Caiaphas and the Sanhedrin, Caiaphas asked Jesus if he was the son of God. And Jesus gave an honest answer. He answered yes. Since Caiaphas and the Sanhedrin did not believe in Jesus, they had Pilate crucify Jesus for this so-called blasphemy because they actually thought he was making fun of God. In the 20th century since Jesus was born, lived among us for a while, and then was crucified and risen again from the grave, many so-called scholars have crucified Jesus again by denying Jesus is true God. Human reason cannot figure out who Jesus really is. This morning on the way, I heard a rebroadcast of something that Paul Harvey used on an annual basis. He was a radio newsman some years ago. He talked about a man and some birds. And the man was a decent man, a family man. Took care of his family well. But he would go to church with his wife and family on occasion, but he was honest enough to say that he did not accept the Jesus story. And now it's a Christmas Eve. And his wife and children are going to the Christmas midnight, Christmas Eve midnight service. And he told his wife, he says, I just can't in good conscience do that. And so his wife and children left for the church service. He sat down to do some reading. And then he heard a thud and another thud and several more. And when he checked it out on his walkout porch with the big, huge glass doors, there were a bunch of birds who hit that window and were bouncing around in the snow looking quite cold and, and somewhat helpless. The man wanted to help the birds. The family had a small barn not far away with where they kept a couple of horses. It was a nice warm place. We'd be shelter for the birds. He opened the door. He tried to coax the birds to go into there. He, he laid a trail of breadcrumbs to try and get them to eat their way in. No matter what he tried, the birds did not cooperate. And finally the man realized that they were just plain too scared. He finally thought, if only I were a bird, then I could tell them where to find shelter. And the church bells began to ring. He was already outside and he fell on his knees in the snow. Christmas is about God making himself known to us. Jesus truly is God in human flesh, even if our reason cannot fully comprehend that. And the passage before us from Colossians clearly says Jesus is much more than our brother. St. Paul says the child of Bethlehem is the firstborn over all creation. He is the image of the invisible God. All things have been created through him. He is before all things. Today, then, as we look at the baby Jesus in the manger, Paul says some wonderful things about this child named Jesus. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. 
Yes, God is invisible. So we cannot get to know him easily because he is invisible. Paul here says Jesus is the image of God. And with that word image, Paul is saying much more than likeness. Image here says God is fully revealing himself in the person of Jesus. When you look at Jesus, you also see the Father. Christ is the firstborn over all creation. I am the first of four children in the family that I grew up in, so I am the firstborn. And by that, we're talking about time. I came in time before the other three came in time. But here, the word firstborn doesn't mean just a reference to time. It points to supremacy and rank. The Lord, through Moses, in the book of Exodus, speaks of Jacob, or his new name, Israel, as the firstborn son. God's firstborn son. In time, because Jacob was a twin, he was the second one out of the womb. He wasn't the firstborn. But the Lord chose Jacob to have supremacy over his twin brother, Esau. And Jesus has supremacy over not just a few people, but over all creation. And he has the supremacy because he created all things. For in him all things were created, in heaven and on earth, things seen and unseen, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities, all things have been created through him and for him. We sometimes summarize the work of the Trinity with the words creator, redeemer, sanctifier. In other words, God the Father is looked upon as the creator. But we're dealing with the Trinity, and Scripture does speak of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost working together as one in all that they do. The Jesus, as the Son of God, was not the first thing that was created by God. Yes, he was begotten in eternity, but he was not created because he's eternal. John, in his gospel, simply says, without him nothing was made that has been made. All that you and I can see has been made by Jesus. And all those things that we cannot see that were created have been created by Jesus. Things such as gravity, for example. We can't see it, but we know it's there. And angels have been made by Jesus. The planet Earth, the solar system, the vast universe has all been made by Jesus. Thrones and authorities, whether kingdoms here on earth or in the spiritual realms have been made by Jesus. Jesus created all things and all things serve Jesus. And today as we look in the manger we marvel that the creator who is eternal in time became a creature born of Mary. And I used this word several weeks ago, unglaublich. Unbelievable. Who'd have thunk it? Paul continues to give a wonderful description of Jesus. He is before all things, and all things hold together in him. Jesus is before all things. He is preeminent. And marvel of marvels, the Son of God chose to leave his heavenly glory and live among us here on earth. Peter in his first epistle describes this earth as an overflowing river of filth. We live in a sinful world. The Son of God chose to be Emmanuel, to be with us in order to save us from our sin. Jesus holds together all things. That is, he upholds creation, keeps it going, 
so that we have the four seasons each year, summer, winter, seed time, and harvest. Jesus preserves creation so that he can show us the love of God. Christmas is a simple story. It is a story of God's love. And yet there are people who continue to try to improve this message. And everyone who tries to do that in some way ends up diminishing the glory of God that is revealed in Christ Jesus. The devil continues to try to lead people away from Christ. He will take lies he's used before, dress them up in, in, in a different way to try and lead people away from Jesus. Knowing the real Jesus helps us stay away from the counterfeit Jesus that false prophets are trying to pass off. And no matter how beautiful that counterfeit may be, it, it's, uh, it's not something we should pay attention to. The better we know Jesus, the better we will see that the false is false. Jesus is true God and true man in one person. He is Emmanuel, God with us. That may not be something that is agreeable with our reason. But he is revealed. He is the firstborn of all creation. Because he is who he is, he is our savior from sin. Amen. The peace of God that surpasses all our understanding shall keep our hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Amen. we pray. Precious Savior, we rejoice at your birth because we know that you came as the Lamb of God to take away the sins of the world. We look beyond the manger to the cross where your precious blood was poured out to cover our sins from God's sight forever. Bless our faith this day as we stand in reverent awe before your manger bed, contemplating the mystery of your incarnation again and again as we bow our heads in humble contrition confessing our sins before your cross. May we never lose sight of the cross as the purpose for your coming. As we reach out our hearts to you with loving kindness and, and adoration, in penitence and trust, forgive our sins, make us alive with hope, settle us with peace, and renew in us the joy of everlasting life. Precious Savior, you are the light of all the earth. The message of salvation in your name is meant to gladden every heart. And so we pray, send out your light and your truth to nations everywhere, that every knee may bow before you and every heart worship you as true God incarnate, who came to earth to save all people from their sins. Encourage and equip us as witnesses to bear the gospel to other people, beginning with their own families and the unchurched people in our neighborhoods. In the new year which lies just ahead, keep your light of love and truth shining brightly in our hearts by faith. Watch over us, lest we be led aside into the paths of sin and unbelief, which can only lead to destruction. Increase our understanding of your word and give us wisdom to apply it to our daily lives. Finally, dearest Jesus, shower us with your manifold blessings in the coming year. Satisfy our needs as you are accustomed to doing. As we watch your glorious return, may we do so with confidence and with joy as people who have become true children of the Father through faith in his Son. Give heed to our many prayers which we offer to our Heavenly Father in your name, and be ever ready to intercede with him in our behalf. We adore you, we worship and serve you, our Savior and King. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
Hymn 85 was written by Martin Luther as a way to teach his children the Christmas story. He makes a wonderful application in that hymn. I read selected verses. Welcome to earth, thou noble guest, through whom the sinful world is blessed. Thou comes to share my misery, what thing shall I return to thee? And thus, dear Lord, it pleases thee to make this truth quite plain to me, that all the world's wealth, honor, might are naught and worthless in thy sight. Ah, dearest Jesus, holy child, make thee a bed soft undefiled within my heart that it may be a quiet chamber kept for thee. Amen. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, who has safely brought us to the beginning of this day, defend us in the same with your mighty power and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all our doings, being ordered by your governance, may be righteous in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and governs with you in the Holy Ghost, one true God, now and forever. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Our final hymn is hymn 94. Hark the herald angels sing, glory to the newborn King. Peace on earth and mercy mild, God and sinners reconciled. Joyful all ye nations rise, join the triumph of the skies. With angelic hosts proclaim, Christ is born in Bethlehem. Hark the herald angels sing, glory to the newborn King. Christ the highest heaven adored, Christ the everlasting Lord. Late in time behold him come, offspring of a virgin's womb. Veiled in flesh the Godhead see, hail the incarnate deity. Pleased as man with man to dwell, Jesus our Emmanuel. Hark, the herald angels sing, glory to the newborn king. Hail the heavenly prince of peace, hail the son of righteousness. Light and life to all he brings, risen with healing in his wings. Mild he leaves his throne on high, born that man no more may die. Born to raise the sons of earth, born to give them second birth. Hark, the herald angels sing, glory to the newborn king. Come, desire of nations, come, fix in us thy humble home. O to all thyself impart, formed in each believing heart. Hark the herald angels sing, glory to the newborn king. Peace on earth and mercy mild, God and sinners reconciled. Hark the herald angels sing, glory to the newborn king. Amen. <laughs>